Um, oh my goodness, I have not done this in two years. And I apologize to my um, three subscribers. Two of you, I think I know you. I don't know. So um, anyway, all of you, hi. Hi, friends. Um, yeah, so I want to get back to doing this. I think the coronavirus and just taking care of my mom and then the fact that she died May 8th that just all threw me into a loop um, into a loop I mean into a a dark spiral um, called grief but anyway I want to get back into this into the word because um, I don't know, just want to do it. So the last time we talked, I mentioned reading the New Testament too, so I will do that. And in, in terms of commentaries, I have to gather all my commentaries together because they're, they're somewhere, I don't know where. So, <clears throat> but anyway, wait, I think the last chapter I read was chapter 8 of Genesis, so let's read chapter 9. And this is really, um, you know, motivation for me to get back into reading the word because I actually listen to it a lot on YouTube, which is really nice. <laughs> but I'd also like to ac actually read it. Um, okay, enough with the preamble. Here, in jo this is Joey, and also. Um, my channel is named after my cats, Chloe, Joey, but Chloe died. And um, so that's really, really sad. She died um, March 1st. Uh, yeah, she died March 1st. And then my mom died May 8th. So sadness. So here's Joey and he's 17 now. Okay. All right, Genesis chapter nine, and I think I'll just read the from the <clears throat> New International Version translation. Or is that what I want to read from? Hmm, let me look. Okay, yeah, I'll just we'll just do that. Chapter nine. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, "Be fruitful." and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground and upon all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal and from each man too. I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood, blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made man. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number. Multiply on the earth and increase upon it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that was with you the birds, the livestock, oops, my camera, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you 
a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth, and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. The sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the earth. Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked in backward and covered their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father's nakedness. When Noah woke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed or cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend the territory of Japheth. May Japheth live in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. Altogether, Noah lived 950 years, and then he died. Uh, okay, that's the end of Genesis chapter 9, which was interesting. Of course, I've read the Bible before, but, you know, to be honest, you know, I obviously believe in the Bible, but God knows I do take issue with certain things, and Oh no, there are just some weird things. Well, first of all, what it, and I should know this, that that's why the commentaries would come in handy and just also praying about this and seeking the truth and the words here and God's word. But anyway, like, what is this thing with Noah's nakedness and that whole situation? Um, <laughs> God, are you listening? I mean, you know, granted, these are ancient people, and it's an ancient culture, and I just, I'm not sure I understand the nuances here, so when I say these things, it's me just, like, trying to work stuff out and um, ask God to give some insight, and of course, if anybody has insight, you can comment below. Um... Yeah, the whole thing with the rainbow is beautiful, and what else? Oh, the other thing that was weird to me, um, I have to be honest, because God knows what's in my heart. I mean, you know, I could be fake and say, oh, it's not beautiful. Not really spoke to me, but, you know, there's some things where I'm like, what? One, one of the things was... What, where did it go? Uh, wait, wait, I'm trying to find it. Oh. Hmm. God says, no, and two. Oh, in verse 8, when, you know, it says, Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you. And then he goes on. But it's kind of like, well, why didn't he call the daughters out, too? I don't get that. Anyway. I'd like an explanation, God. Okay, anyway. Um, let's go now to the New Testament.
Matthew. Whoops. Matthew chapter one. Like an explanation for some things that I don't understand. Okay. Matthew chapter one. A record of the gene genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Tamar. Hmm. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Amminadab. Amminadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. And Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon, oh wait, that's interesting, sorry. A little aside here, yeah, Uriah's wife, of course, was Bathsheba. Um... So interesting, actually. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just neat. Glad that there are women in the, named in the genealogy. Okay, moving on. Uh, Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asa. Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram. Jehoram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah, the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amon. Amon, the father of Josiah. And Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel. Oh, I'm massacring that pronunciation. Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel, the father of Abiud. Abiud, the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azar. Azar, the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Akim, Akim, the father of Eluid, Eluid, the father of Eliezer, Eliezer, the father of Mathan, Mathan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. And of course, just an aside, in the Hebrew, there aren't J sounds, like J, Jesus, you know, so it's actually you know, the English uh, way of saying um, the name of Jesus, which, which would really be Yeshua. Okay. Verse 17. Thus there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, which technically would be Yeshua. Um, that was me, not the Bible. Okay, <clears throat> take two. And you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus, or Yeshua. Is really what it, that's just me adding on to the text here. But yeah, I mean, that's the Hebrew for his name, Yeshua. Um, okay, that's the end of Matthew chapter 1, and I think it's interesting. What was interesting? There was something that stood out. Oh, yeah, it's interesting to me that, um, that, you know, um, Joseph was considering something, something, you know, that things he was concerned about and considering, you know, within the confines of his own head. I mean, it was literally, he was thinking about not, um, you know, divorcing, divorcing Mary and, you know, silently thinking about these things. And it's interesting to me that an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. It's it, two things. It's interesting, firstly, that, you know, obviously God knows our thoughts, but that this angel um, was able to enter a, a dream um, I, I don't know, just if, that, an angel, that, you know, angels can appear to us in dreams and that somehow there's a, it's just interesting, the whole realm of the spirit and connection between God and man and angels and man and the spiritual realm and our mind and our you know, unconscious or subconscious or, or our dream state, how there's just connection there that it, it's interesting how permeable that is. I don't know. I guess if I don't understand the internet and how that works and how we can be connected via the internet, I guess it, it'd be a great mystery to understand how we're connected to, <laughs> you know, these heavenly realities. Okay, Joey, he's giving me the eye. Thanks. See ya next time I'll try to hopefully nothing will befall me and I'll be able to um, you know do this on a regular basis love you bye